Welcome to my next video on enterprise security. This time we're going to talk about inventory and adding metadata to it. I'm going to call it inventory collection, even though you're not really collecting inventory per se. Um, but the point is, we're going to be able to uh, give some inventory context to our data. And the real simple method here, we're just going to follow the docs for a minute so that you, you can see where all these fields are in the documentation. And then we'll put it into practice. Uh, and Let's go see that. So if I jump over to Enterprise Security and I look in the section on uh, for admin administration, I come in here and I go to Format and Asset Identity List, it comes down and it defines and it says you you can supply a CSV and it will they want these fields. And if you have multiple fields, the big key there is you're going to pipe delimit them. That's how it, not a comma delimited, but it'll be a pipe delimited. And so if you have lots of uh, IPs, but I'm able to find what IP is, MAC address, an NT host, a DNS, you don't have to have all of these filled out. If they're empty, it's okay. Uh, but you fill out what you can, who's the owner, priority. This is very useful if you're doing correlation searches because you can actually use this priority to raise the risk level. So by default, maybe when a correlation search hits a machine, it'll give it a risk score of one. But if you give a higher priority here, it can raise that and thereby assign high risk. Latitude and longitude, city, country, business unit, highly recommended field because there are dashboards in enterprise security that allow you to filter on business units. And maybe it's all the same business unit depending on your organization. But anyway, examples of business unit, what kind of category, like is it a server, web farm, cloud. In my, uh, in my situation, I tend to put web servers, um, DNS servers, basically major attributes of systems as a category. If you're using anything with PCI domains, is the machine expected, as in you should always be seeing it, because you could actually set up, there's a correlation search that says, hey, has this machine disappeared? I'm looking, for, basically, have I not seen any traffic, any logs from this machine? <clears throat> should we be hitting a time sync? If you got time sync logs coming in here, that'll be helpful. Update logs. AV logs, and then SIM entity zones. SIM entity zones is kind of a, if you're familiar with uh, Phantom, they use multi-tenant. The concept is maybe you, you've acquired multiple companies or you have multiple private networks in your environment and 10.0.0.1 exists in, in private network one and private network two, and they are two different private networks, but you want to make sure that when your logs come in, it recognizes that this belongs to entity one and entity two. And so that's what SIM entity is. It's just to kind of define its zones or different businesses so that you don't have conflicts in IP addresses. There's also identity fields. I'm not really going to go through them, but it's the exact same principle. But this time, it's based off users. And so you're going to get their names. And again, your priority is, if you see this, that might be a system administrator. They're going to have a higher priority, business unit, start date, end date. And so you can do the exact same thing with uh, with identities. I'm going to stay here with uh, assets just because it's easier. But it's really the exact same concept, and it's just be repetitive if I did it. All right, so I've got those fields. You can just go create yourself a Excel sheet, a CSV, and put these headers in there. And what you've got, fill it out. Um, I'm going to, I actually have, I don't know if I'll post the video. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it open to everyone content. I have a Splunk app, and it basically generates my own inventory. But basically, I look through all my network logs, and I do some little uh, Splunk foo to it, and it comes back, and it basically says, here's all my IPs. Here's all the MAC addresses I saw. Here's all their business uses, things like that. And I have that from a Splunk search, and then I can dump it into a out with an output lookup into a CSV. I'm not even going to do that here. I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to go to Lookup Editor. I went into my Lookup Editor, and I typed the word Asset. Enterprise Security comes with a demo asset CSV called Demo Asset CSV. And if I go open that, so if I come here and I get a little magnifying glass, here is an inventory. So here's the business units. Here's the category, city, country, DNS, IP. That's what they're going to look like. And you know what? I'm going to keep that. Looks good to me. Um, so, yeah. And so you can see they 
they've done some stuff by just subnetting. They've done some by specific IP addresses, a mixture of anything you want to do, however you want to categorize your stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to output look up here to YouTube inventory assets.csv. So I'm going to, as if I made some major cool query that generates inventory. What have I really done? I have just cheated. I'm lazy and I'm just going to use their inventory. So now I have my own inventory. There it is. Sweet. All right. So what do I do now that I have the inventory? Well, first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to settings and we're going to go make a lookup. Let's see, go lookups. Why am I blind? Lookups right here. And I'm going to make a definition. You need to make a definition and assign it to a particular data uh, app. So we're going to do a new lookup definition. I'm going to grab my YouTube CSV. And we want to put this in the SA identity management app. This is the key that makes it all work. It, uh, your Splunk is going to look for lookup files inside this identity management. And if they're in there, they become eligible to be used for inventory asset and identity management. So I'm going to make an asset identity management and I'm going to give it a name called YouTube um, asset inventory.csv. Nope. Leave the CSV off. We're going to grab a file based YouTube inventory assets and hit save. Make sure that it's available globally. YouTube. There it is. And we're going to go permissions. Read right. After doing that, I should have it here. What we're going to do, we're going to come in. I'm going to go to enterprise security. And I'm going to go cert configure data enrichment, asset and identity management. All right, so I've got, I'm here at that asset and identity management. I've put in my lookups. I made my CSV. I made my lookup definition. Now I'm going to come in here and hit new, new configuration. And I'm going to grab that YouTube lookup definition I made. So I come all the way down to the bottom. I can probably type YouTube, get YouTube asset inventory. What do I want it to be called? I'm good with that. Category, um, network inventory. And we'll give a description. Inventory for YouTube demo. We're not going to put any deny lists in there. We're just going to leave that alone. Now I have a fourth inventory piece here. It by default is enabled. I can hit disable if I want to turn off any inventory. I can use this reset collections, which says, hey, uh, basically what's happening is at a set interval, it will go through and it will grab all the inventory from everything that was enabled and compile it into one giant inventory source. And if you want to just, if you keep adding stuff in and you want to make sure it's running uh, currently, you can reset the collection so you don't have to wait. It will then rebuild the collections and all your stuff will come in. I'm not that uh, worried about getting it all coming in. You'll just, you'll just have to deal with the fact that not all my data that from my YouTube asset inventory is currently available when I demo it. It's not a big deal. Um, I do have the ability, if I want to hit search preview, here is some queries I can use to get back up any of my asset lookups. This will bring back my assets. There's other ways of doing it. Um, other things, maybe the fields that they have for assets aren't enough for you. And so we can come in here and we can modify these. 
uh, you'll see that multi-values like business unit will allow you up to, up to 25. If you have more than that, pipes delimited, you'll have problems. So you can just set, you can mess with those things. You can add new fields and say, hey, I want to keep track of this inventory item or whatever. Do you want to enable case sensitive asset matching? That you totally can do that. I think that would cause massive problems. I never my inventory. Nothing's better than having user house name spelled differently, but there might be reasons. Uh, anyway, I, you can mess with your fields that you want. Uh, if you're doing an lo identity lookup, you would have done the exact same thing. You'd have made the CSV, then the definition, then you'd come in here, make a new configuration, and add it. You can mess with the identity settings. Global settings here, if you do want to use entity zones, you come in here and you want to turn this on. By default, assets is off, identity is off, so I would flip it on, and then I can hit configure zones, and this will take, I can make rules, so it says, hey, when you see the source IP equal to this, automatically assign it a uh, zone of home. I can do ciders, source IP, 192.168.0.0 slash 16, is home. I mean, you can do whatever you want. There's all sorts of things you can do with the site. Configure zones. You find a field in the raw logs, and it will use that. And then, uh, so you turn that on. You can then the last thing you want to do is correlation setup, and you this correlation setup is particularly for that entity zone. You'll say I want it to match on all source types. Don't match on source types. Uh, do selectively. I just do it by source type, so it says, hey, if I find this data in the source types, for all source types, I'm going to be looking to be matching, and I'll add the entity zone on there. You, and that only relates if you're doing entity zones. Anyway, uh, that's, that's that. So let's show how this comes into practice. If I go into security domains, security intelligence, sorry, security domains, and I do network, I can do network um, endpoint oh it's not gonna be there either uh, identity my bad identity asset center now there'll be other drill downs and stuff like that but here I can come take a look at my inventory And so here are all the assets that are showing up in mine and what they're tied to and their latitude and longitude. And so if I have a particular machine that pops up, I can put that in there, 102. It's going to bring me back information just about that specific machine. Or I can just use star and get back all of my inventory. And where does that actually pop up? So you can see here's all my business units. Here's my categories. And if I knew, as I said, if I knew my name of my machines, there they are, what what role they serve as, et cetera. Now, let's just show, if I go to incident and review, you have the ability to have drill downs. And again, those drill downs will lead you to get more information about a machine. So I've got my incident review. I have an alert that popped. We see that there is a, hopefully I see an IP, source IP address suite. So if I come over here and I click this, which by the way, these risk scores are based off the fact that these will start to pop if you have inventory assigned. And so because I have inventory assigned, they will start to show up. And anyway, so if I come here, source IP. Now I can actually go to Asset Center, and it's going to take it based off of Asset Investigator. If I click this Asset Investigator, it's going to go look up that IP address, and I can see the behavior for it. I bet I won't have much here. Nope. But I could. I might have stuff underneath the... Come back. Host. Source. Click this, and I could go to Asset Center, which was just where I was 
but instead of manually going there, so I can get the details about a specific device. It's going to fill out the little box here when it loads. There, throw in the IP address and give me back information. So if you're doing an investigation, you can find out what information you know about that machine. Kind of helps save you from having to uh, go look that stuff up if you don't know it off the top of your head. Anyway, this is how to add inventory into Splunk. Uh, I, I call it metadata. It's not that you're actually creating inventory. It's just making, all right, if I see IPs, I'll match that. If I see host names, um, I'll match that, and I'll, I'll give you back information. And so this really just helps you to be able to gather information about your systems really quickly. These priorities help you adjust the risk scores associated with machines. So you can, t you can have assets that are of more value on your network get ri uh, rated higher when an alert fires on them. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Please recognize that this is a video uh, this video is in the playlist, so look down below. There's a link to the playlist. This is all about enterprise security. We take this from cradle to grave, installation, all the different processes. I, I find it to be a very highly inclusive list, and it's free, uh, whereas most stuff on about enterprise security, you're going to have to pay for it. It's kind of paywall. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope it helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja, and I hope you keep coming back.